Well, let's talk for a few minutes about designing the visual aids that you're going to be using with your upcoming speeches and presentations. First of all, these, these presentations can use anything from PowerPoints to handouts to show and tell items as you uh, look for ways to help really send home the message that you're trying to deliver with your presentation. First of all, PowerPoints. Those are those, you know, those presentations that are created on your computer with different slides and you are and they show them via a projector. There are flip charts, the giant tablets that are usually standing on a stand or hanging on a stand and you either have the information pre-written on them or you write on them as you go through the presentation. There are overhead transparencies, which I call the old style PowerPoints before we had our computers and you took a piece of plastic, uh, clear plastic, and you created visuals on those. They're handouts, something that you've had printed in advance. Uh, could be an outline, could be just basic information about your speech that you want to hand out. And then there are those show and tell items. If you're talking about your dog, for example, and you want to have, uh, have your dog with you, uh, then that would be a show and tell item. Something uh, could also be like you're wanting to talk about your cell phone. Well, you have your cell phone that you can hold up and show everybody, uh, or maybe it's something else and you point it out to them on a table. Whatever you use, make it easy to read, make it easy to be memorable, and make it something that is easy for you to use as you go through the speech. We'll start talking first of all about PowerPoints. Uh, when you create a PowerPoint, to begin with, think manageable amounts of information. Don't put a lot of information on a PowerPoint slide. Use key phrases or words. Uh, Think, think of the PowerPoints that I send to you. Uh, I don't use extremely long sentences. I seldom use one word. Uh, most of the time it's a key phrase that I want you to remember. Don't overdo it. Remember, this is an outline for the audience to follow along with. It is not the speech. You are delivering the speech presentation. Use the, uh, use the PowerPoint as your outline. And think of this. If you have too much information on that PowerPoint, then chances are the audience is going to either be trying to read along and not pay attention to you or there's so much information that the audience just gets caught up in it and uh, just totally tunes you out as they read along uh, the PowerPoint and they can read much faster than you speak so therefore they're ahead of you and the message is lost. At the same time don't underdo it. Uh, each thought should make some sense on its own. Uh, textbook Page 140 has some examples of what to do and what not to do with slides. They show you how to have not, not enough info, they show you what it, what it looks like with not enough information, and they show you what it looks like when it should be done properly. So again, uh, to really get a good idea of this, go to 140 in your textbook. Once you uh, have kind of an idea now of what's going to be on the slides, remember, try to group your related elements into visual units. For an example, if I were doing a presentation, a PowerPoint, for example, on this particular lecture, I would start with a slide that shows items, well, first of all, I'd start with an opening slide to get your attention. Then my next slide would probably go into the different types of visual aids that you can use. Talk about PowerPoints that, you know, they're created on your computer and shown via projector, the flip charts, etc., etc. One through five, that would be on one page. Then the next grouping that I would go to would be the graphics, which is what we're going to be talking about in just a moment. So we'd go from what are they to the graphics that you're going to use. And as you establish your graphics, remember to come up with a theme of some kind. First of all, choose a basic scheme and a basic color for your slides that you're going to use all the way through. It can be kind of disconcerting uh, to someone following along if you see uh, the slide uh, go from blue to red to green to yellow. Try to pick one color, one basic outline, and follow it all the way through. Uh, what I like to do too, once I have the color scheme figured out, uh, I also will find a picture or artist drawing of some type, or maybe I'll go take my camera and take a picture and use that as the graphic that I'm going to be uh, putting on my slide in order to to try to drive home again the message. This is all one big message. Your words, the slides, the pictures you use, all of those things are all interrelated to make your speech memorable 
and drive home the message that you want to drive. If you're going to be using numbers, let's say you're talking about statistics, a couple of things to note about that. First of all, numbers are hard to grasp uh, particularly if it's ver being verbally delivered. So you can use, and sometimes even if the numbers are just spelled out on the page, uh, it can be a little difficult to grasp. Try to find a pie chart, uh, a graph of some type uh, that, will, that will demonstrate or illustrate what it is you're trying to say with those numbers. So again, it's easy to visualize for the person that's listening to you. Uh, and don't spell out numbers. Uh, if you're spelling out tw 10, for instance, don't spell out T-E-N, put the numbers one zero there. And you go with that because, again, visually it's easier to, uh, to comprehend. When you're choosing fonts, the book gives lots of information on page 142 about the fonts that you can use. Whatever you choose, make sure that it's easy to read. Consider the size of the font you're going to use. Consider the color of the font you're going to use and how that relates to the, um, to the background that you've chosen. For an example, uh, I had a student uh, a couple of years ago giving a speech and using a PowerPoint, and I'm sure when he created this PowerPoint on his home computer that the presentation looked great but the background was red and the letters were black. And it was extremely difficult once that was transmitted onto a giant screen for anyone in the audience to read. So yes, it may look good on your computer, but think how it might reflect off of a, uh, off of a screen in the front of a large room when you are putting this information together. Uh, when you use color, you can use it to create a mood, for example, oranges and reds, they create excitement. The, the cool or calming colors are greens and blues. Use that, you know, use that as a subtle way of helping to uh, create the type of interest that you're trying to generate in your speech presentation. And then once you have all these things in your head, uh, what I like to do to actually create and put together a PowerPoint, this is really the most uh, foolproof way of doing it to make sure that you get everything into the PowerPoint that you wanted to have. Start first of all by creating the outline of your speech. Get the topic, get the main points, the sub points, create your open, create your close, uh, create the, uh, the introduction that you're wanting to use to, in order to gain attention. Now take all of that and create storyboards. Uh, take a couple of pieces of paper and a pencil, doesn't matter if you're a good artist or not, uh, but just sit down and draw out squares representing each slide and put the information on each one of those that you want it to have. Then, once you have that done, uh, you're going to go find the graphics and the pictures that go along and coincide with the information that you're trying to present and pick your colors so that they suit the mood, suit the graphics and the, and, uh, and the pictures that you have put together and make it all, you know, you're, you're, you're using building blocks here, uh, one step at a time, information, uh, graphics, colors, and then integrate it all together to make the finished PowerPoint project. And remember, sometimes you will need more than one item or one slide per item. Uh, let's say you're talking about something that has a lot of information and, and you want to avoid having too much information on one slide. So create two slides. Uh, an example could be where you have a lot of numerical information and you are going to be using a big pie chart well, maybe you spell out the key basic points about that uh, numeric information or those statistics on one slide, and then your second slide has the pie chart uh, or the graph that you are using in order to uh, explain the, uh, the concept that you're talking about. And once you have all that together, put it together and practice with it, and we'll talk more about practice in the part two of this lecture.